So it says fuel to 299, 250. Oh, damn near tripped off. It says fuel to 250.99 gallons, so it'll never take that much. Let's see if it lets me put in till it's full or if it shuts me off at a thousand like some of them do. Thousand dollars. This is gonna be over a thousand dollars most likely. There's a big load right there. And you wonder how big them wind turbine heads are. That's when the wind turbines, the blades go right up front right there. I'll give you an idea how big that stuff is. over a thousand that'd be nice I may actually get full tanks Plus, 
that's just the estimate of the GPS. Should something go wrong, or slow me down for whatever reason, or I just don't do the average speed that the GPS thinks I would do because I'm not even doing the speed limit right here, I didn't want to gamble with it. I just said, you know what? We'll just go the fastest way and be done with it. Get unloaded and see what dispatch has planned. Today's Thursday, tomorrow's Friday. So most likely if we're gonna get loaded, we'll be loaded tomorrow. And then see what the rest of the weekend holds. I'm kinda hoping it's load up on Monday, but it's no guarantee on anything. No way to know yet either. Naturally, I grab the better paying stuff anyway, regardless of where it's going. So we'll see.
walking out. It's, it's been a tailwind basically the whole way. It's pretty damn windy in Colorado. Pretty real windy here. You see the American flag blowing in the breeze back there at the truck stop. That was just straight across. So, plenty breezy. Those are nice and light. Whoa. Frequent that I ever come through here. Is that bag going? All right, stay over there. Stay over there. Ah, missed it. a dollar a gallon overnight the following week this is the extra it would cost my dad in a week not about you but that's not a lot of money to worry about per week but when diesel goes up everything us truckers touch gets way expensive because we haul everything you're getting killed at the grocery store, you get killed when you buy everything. Whatever you go to the store, that's where you get killed. Now, unless you're driving like 100, 200 miles a day to work or, or traveling in your job like that, gas prices really doesn't affect you as bad as everything else affects you when us as drivers charge off that extra cost of diesel to what you buy. That makes sense. I think the people decide, and this is just my opinion, I think the people decide that they're gonna, if they're gonna raise up the cost of oil, and they have to offset that cost in the selling of two motor fuels, gasoline or diesel. Which one of the two is the major voting block that the media pays attention to? gasoline it leaves the diesel guys 
by themselves. Because the average housewife is concerned about gas prices, but hasn't put two and two together, not because she's dumb, because she doesn't was never taught. She was never taught that diesel moves everything you buy. Gasoline moves only your ass. Diesel moves everything you buy. Gasoline only moves your ass. When you go to the store and put your bag of groceries in your car, that is the first time, the very first time, that that product has been transported via gasoline. It was pulled out of the field via a diesel tractor. It was hauled out of the field via a diesel truck. It was brought to the processing plant or manufacturing plant or whatever the hell they do, whatever they grew out in them fields. It was moved by diesel. The electricity to power that plant burned by coal most often or even natural gas, possibly nuclear, but unlikely. And around here, some of these windmills, maybe, but not much. Still haven't seen a drop of gas yet. Then it's moved from the plant to the distribution center via diesel truck. Then it's moved to the to, from the distribution center to where you bought it via, guess what? Diesel truck. The very first time it got transported on gasoline is a short little hop, skip, and a drum from the store to your house. But every other bit of that was diesel fuel. And they're crying about gas prices. So when oil goes up, in my opinion, they jack up the diesel not the gasoline because they don't want to piss off the housewife well that's my rant of fuel price diesel price gas price Said, though, that's just my opinion of things but you know I'm 45 years old I've seen this time and time again I remember when I was a kid a kid diesel was always cheaper than gasoline not no more why do you think my Dodge is Hemi powered I didn't go with the Cummins because I didn't want to deal with the after treatment the, the, you know, the death and all of that. I didn't want to risk getting into trouble if I put a delete kit in the truck. So my answer was to stay with the gasoline. You're not going to convince me that even if the Cummins gets, quote, better fuel economy, that dollars per mile, it's cheaper. You're never going to convince me of that. Even if I spend more in fuel in total, meaning even if the fuel... Even if the difference between what the Cummins fuel economy gets, which I don't think is all that great, especially towing. Because let's be honest, I'm not trying to be i uh, I'm not trying to be a Billy Badass here, like I'm not made of money, but for what I normally do with my pickup truck, I frankly don't give a crap what the gas price is. But when I have to do a long drive, like from Wisconsin to Glamis, yeah, all of a sudden that trip is like four grand just in gasoline so but you're not going to tell me that if the Cummins got double the fuel economy which it might at the savings of two thousand dollars no because the fuel is two dollars a gallon more that's probably a push i gotta do the math i can't do it right now but that made a difference let's say that my heavy pole in my trailer gets seven and a half miles a gallon towing which we know it does towing that big huge trailer of mine and gets seven and a half mile a gallon if diesel if if the cummins gets let's give it 13 four let's be generous let's give it 14 not nah, 15 double and that's 15 let's give it 15 miles a gallon towing a trailer which i doubt it can but if it does diesel is two dollars a gallon more here's the numbers this is what, oh, cab over going the other way. Looking good, looking good. Those 2,300 miles out, 2,300 miles back, 7.5 mile a gallon. Here's the numbers based on what I just saw. 
and we'll, by the time I actually edit this, we'll look it up. Okay, so here's the cost round trip if the fuel price is identical across the board. Not worry about the total cost, I'm trying to find a difference. So what would it be? Let's see here. So the Hemi gets 7.5 miles a gallon. Divide that with uh, 2,300 miles. This is how many gallons it burns. The difference in the, co here's the cost of the fuel. Now let's look at the Cummins. Let's get the same 2,300 miles at 15 miles a gallon. This is the gallons it burns. This is how much each gallon is. And there's your difference. Figure that out by your trip. And there you go. That's the difference. Obviously, as I'm filming this, I'm not doing the math. I'm doing the math as I'm editing it. I don't see it paying off the difference of all the extra expense of the diesel, the maintenance, the really high maintenance of the diesel. Not to mention, you got to put the death fluid in there too. I don't see it as saving anything. So that's why that that's why the Dodge that I run is Hemi powered. The problem with the big trailer, with the Hemi, is it's hard to get fuel for it because it's real hard to get in a standard gas station with a 41-foot trailer. You can't go to the big diesel pumps at the truck stops. Well, who would want to? You're getting bent over for 50 cents a gallon more. Now, the Flying J, they have the big uh, RV pumps, but the diesel price is still the same gas price the same as on the little pumps so it's easier to get the Hemi into Flying J's even if the price is a couple cents more the convenience makes it simpler and I'm not a fan of Flying J by any means but being able to squeeze a you know a vert, basically a 20 foot long truck towing a 41 foot trailer uh, convenience is key We're rolling out a gas station late at night, ain't nobody there. There is a point in weight where, like if you're towing a, with a truck all the time, I get it, maybe a diesel would play out better, maybe. But honestly, I'm not really so sure when you're dealing with pickup trucks, with campers, or even heavy trailers. Why do you think in 2022, Dodge finally allowed, again, to put the Hemi with the Dually. When I got my 21, you couldn't get the Hemi with the Dually. So the biggest truck I could get with the Hemi was the 2500. And since they had one on a lot, I didn't bother ordering it, so I got the Tradesman. So I left a couple options on the table, but not nothing I couldn't live without. But at 22, you can get the Hemi in your dually. Just got to order it that way. Oh, and you save $8,500 on the purchase price, though. Yeah, that's right. $8,500 throw comes in from over the Hemi.
you guys wants me in. That container had his blinker on. I don't think you guys is on at all. Either that or Jamie said F this. Because that container did not get prepassed. Looks like that truck behind me got it too. That damn thing fixed. Was working the other day. Oh well, I feel bad. I need to take that radio and antenna to CB shop or just get a new antenna. Maybe go order one. driver. Probably didn't hear me anyway. It's going. 
Oh, I got the three little units for you guys. Homogenizers out here. There you go. Whatever that means, right? I guess it makes milk <laughs> stuff. That's what I thought, but what do I know? Right there, yeah, bottom of each. Somehow I got suckered into offloading all their stuff every time. Well, it'd be nice if the number they gave me was accurate, and then when I called the number that shows up on Google, nobody answers or calls back, so. I just figured, well, I'll hammer yeah. down and get down here. This post I need? Yep. I'll take that one and pull your choppy. But it said till 3.30. I'm like, all right, well, I'll get here before 3.30. Hope for the best. Sure. Yep. I get the top, you get the bottom. There you are. Thank you. Sweet. Okay, yep. I'll just take them off and drop them, and then I'll move them later. Yeah, just give me a minute to get some straps off. All right, good one. You're all the way through. A little more. There you go. You got it. They're about 6,000 a piece. I know they don't look heavy, do they? Last one to roll up and put them away and get out of here. Somebody asked me times like now, like um putting stuff away and why don't I leave the truck idle? Well, it doesn't justify turning it off. I'm not going to be here long enough. I'm going to be here for an hour, maybe even a half hour. Yeah, I'd cut it off. But we're not. And once I found out who was going to unload me and when and all that, I still had to find out. You know, I didn't know if I had to move the truck, move it over, pull up, go out in the backyard. So if it's not going to be off for a long period of time, I'll leave it run. I've always done it like that. And that's not going to change. Stubborn old creature of habit. 